Hello everyone and welcome back to the Geek Wave. This is the low budget show. What's the show so low? It has no budget. And we're doing another patent pending uh, episode where we just talk about stuff going on in the news. It's been busy for me. It's also playoff season, so I've been watching the playoffs, you know, big hockey nut. I'm not that big of a hockey nut, but a team that is directly associated to where I am located has made it to the finals. And at the time that this video is going to go live, it is game seven. So that's been taking up a lot of my time, and I'd rather watch that than sit here and talk about news I don't care about. But I am a glutton for punishment, so we're going to talk about a bunch of news. I say I don't care about it. I care about all of it. It's all really interesting and important to talk about. Ah, it's the news. It's going to be a news episode. We're also going to talk briefly about the future of Pixar, because I think that's kind of interesting. We're going to talk about the Superman set leaks that came out today, and we're going to be talking about uh, Smiling Friends. Season 2 has come and went, I believe it has, is, or is there one more episode? I think they were billing last night's episode as the finale for this season, which uh, would make sense, because that would be eight episodes, and it's kind of what the show stuck to, so... There you go. Very cool. Very cool. So let's just get into the news, talk about a couple of things. These are from a couple weeks ago, but it's just stuff we got to talk about, including a lot of stuff coming from Cartoon Network where they just said, uh, we need a win. We need a win. So here's a bunch of like shows that are going to be returning, including Adventure Time, which is going to be getting that movie soon. They're going to get like a prequel series, just more stuff in the Adventure Time world. Which isn't a bad thing. I think Fiona and Cake really found a different audience than like the generic audience that was there for Adventure Time. I think we gotta do a retrospective on Adventure Time at some point. Because I think that show came out like the perfect time for people my age to connect to it. And then Fiona and Cake comes out at like the perfect time for like the Zenial crisis where you're like trapped in like your own mind. You're in your 20s and you don't know where to go. You feel like the life you should have had has passed you by. And, you know, more Adventure Time, that's never a bad thing. So I'm for it. I'm, I like seeing that return. Uh, the Amazing World of Gumball is also returning. I think we knew about this already. Makes a lot of sense. Just has to happen. And then also some more regular show. So yeah, we're returning to the well of regular show. Of course we are. You know, it's again, those three shows, Adventure Time, Regular Show, and Amazing World of Gumball, they were all part of like a very specific era of Cartoon Network where they were kind of like reigning supreme, where they were like on top of the world and nothing could defeat them or destroy them. And when those shows kind of went off the air, not not like around like the same time, but in that era when they went off the air and then, you know, COVID and the strikes and things kind of got lost in the shuffle, they were, you know, struggling to maintain relevancy to some extent and I think returning to these three universes in particular it's also a cry for help like we need a win but it could also just as easily be we needed this to happen and it's happening now so there you go Cartoon Network is looking to reign supreme again we're not done in the world of animation though because we also got confirmation that a animated Blue Beetle series is in development at the DCU this is potentially going to connect to the whole thing going on with the DCU, which makes a lot of sense. A lot of the talent is returning. A lot of like the producers and directors of the film will be producing and doing a lot of the storyboarding and stuff for this animated series, which makes a lot of sense. I think this is like a huge win for Blue Beetle. Like Jaime is a character that works really well in animation, works really well on television, a great way to develop the audience because I would honestly think you'd get more people watching an animated series about Blue Beetle than you would go to the movie. Now, I know the movie didn't do, like, terrible. It didn't do great. It was kind of like a casualty of the 2023 era of superhero movies bombing and not doing well. But that one was fun. It had a lot going for it. It's kind of a shame it got lost in the shuffle. But then also, that's just part of life. Not everything's going to make it to the top. <laughs> Unfortunately unfortunately. So here's also something I needed to talk about because I find it so interesting and intricate. It's like its own problem that could be arising. It was revealed a few weeks ago that Sony Pictures has bought Alamo Drafthouse, which is a theater chain. So Sony owns a theater now. <laughs> that is very interesting. 
this was illegal for the longest time where like a like a cinema could not be owned by like a distribution partner or like a distribution partner of film because it's weird why would you do that it's kind of dangerous because then you like control too much of what's being shown and it never is good like that used to be the case for a long time in early early hollywood you know like mgm or paramount or rko they'd have their specific theaters they'd play their movies so you could go to like you know the picture show at like your favorite place there you could go there they'd show like their feature that slowly started to change uh as hollywood grew up the theaters realized that we can't just show the same shit from Warner Brothers every week. We have to show something different. And that has been the case for like decades upon decades. This is a different thing to happen. Now, I don't know all the, like the legality behind it. I guess the law has changed or like the law that was in place has changed. But, you know, in Canada, we don't have Alamo. So, uh, I mean, it's not like it's world renowned where Sony's going to drop this stuff everywhere, but it is a bad precedent being set where this could be the case happening in a bunch of other places. Now, I don't like that idea. I really hope that is not the case, and I hope it doesn't become like a trend where more like, you know, maybe we are going to see Warner Brothers or Disney. I could definitely see Disney try to do that. I could see Disney try to do that at one of their parks, where they're like, we're just going to have the Star Wars theater playing, or that kind of a thing. Which is gross. But I do think we are so close to seeing that happen. I don't know. I, I hope it's not the case. But I've we've been hurt before. Bad things always happen. <laughs> oh, you know? God damn. God damn. So, I, I don't know how to feel about this. I'm very worried about what this could be for the future, but... I also don't know if the law is still in place or not, but it's not like Sony has any movies right now that people really want to go see, you know? Are they going to flock to see, like, another showing of Morbius? When you run out of content there, Sony, you're going to play Morbius again? Is that what you're going to do? I can't imagine you would, but you've made dumber decisions before. Ah, <laughs> oh, you fucking idiots. Okay, on to something more interesting. We got confirmation that Raka Raka, they are no longer going to be working on the Street Fighter movie. We talked about it a couple weeks ago where like they were the directors attached. Well, they dropped out due to scheduling conflicts because it looks like, uh, is it Lionsgate? Whoever owns this project or this whatever, they want to get started right away. And these guys have a couple other stuff in development. So they dropped out, which is a shame. I feel like they could bring a really fun alternative take to this very youthful take to street fighter i hope this property doesn't end up becoming like a mortal Kombat. now that mortal Kombat movie it's not bad it has a lot wrong going for it but it's got some good stuff i'd rather see i'd rather see something anime adjacent for street fighter than opposed to like the let's try to make this look cool and dark like mortal Kombat did it's weird. So I think that'd be cool. Who would you cast as like Ryu and Ken and Chun-Li and all of them? I don't know. I don't even... Like, it's such a specific thing to do. I don't know who it would be for. Speaking of things I don't know who they'd be for, Spaceballs sequel in development at Amazon MGM with Josh Gad starring and Mel Brooks producing. Okay. I I literally... I literally don't know who this would be for. <laughs> So, Josh Greenbaum will direct the film from a screenplay by Benji Salmon and Dan Hernandez and Josh Gad. And, okay, 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 here's the thing, okay? Semit and Hernandez, Semit and Hernandez, they have made some really good screenplays. Like Mutant Mayhem, Detective Pikachu, Adam's Family 2. But Spaceballs is such a different horse than doing like an actual story. Because both of those things I just said, or Mutant Mayhem, Detective Pikachu, Adam's Family 2, they are stuff that are narratives. Like, there's stories in there. This is just a joke on Star Wars. 
And I can't think of anything today's Star Wars audience wants less than people making fun of the sequel era. That'd be ter- like, oh my goodness, I can't think of something so tone deaf as opposed to attempting to do a space balls today. Like the culture is so annoying right now for Star Wars that trying to parody it, you're either going to have people too thinking it's going too soft on Star Wars or it's not going hard enough and or it's going too hard and stupid. Like fuck, it's so dumb. Josh Gad, I guess he's going to do like the John Candy rule. It's interesting. Here, okay, here's something I'm just thinking about now. Josh Gad has made a career being one of the bigger size-wise guys. Size-wise guys. <laughs> He's a hefty man. And that has been the staple of his career for a long time. His two projects that we know about going on right now, his directorial debut has to do with Chris Farley. And now he's doing something that John Candy worked on. And I'm not saying he's going to be barf, but he's going to probably do something. And I, I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? Like, why is he doing something on like the two other iconic fat guys from the 90s? Very weird. Very weird. Mel Brooks producing, that means nothing to me. He's he's not sentient at the moment. He's just off in his own world, living his own life. But this sounds so stupid. Like, when we have Star Wars fans getting pissed off that Kiati Mundi is not the same that they say in Wikipedia or whatever, like, who is this for? Why are you doing it? As opposed to anything else that might be remotely interesting, it's ridiculous and dumb. I don't even think the original Spaceballs holds up that well. It stops being funny when you grow up. And I like Mel Brooks. It's probably my least favorite Mel Brooks film. It's so weird. I don't know why they would do this. I don't know who it would be for. And it going to MGM. That's lame. That's not anything. Let's get off this topic before it pisses me off anymore. Let's talk about this. Guess what? The Megan universe is expanding with a spin-off titled Soul May 8, scheduled to premiere January 2nd, 2026. Soul Mate has sparked enthusiasm from Dolan, who views the project as an exploration of relationships and loneliness amidst advanced technology. Do you remember like that article that came out that said like in 10 years you'll be able to have sex with a robot and fall in love with a robot? Women could love a robot, men could love a robot, and everyone's like, the time is now. What if you capitalized on that? So this is kind of about like a lonely person who's trying to cope after losing his wife. He tries to fill the void she left behind by turning on an artificially intelligent android. Nevertheless, his attempt to create a genuine compassion takes a dark turn when the innocent love bot he receives transforms into a dangerous soulmate. A thrilling sequence of events begins. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that. I think that's kind of fun. And it's a little more different and a little bit more like sad and lonely than the stuff that Megan was about. Megan's like, what if a child was going through grief and didn't know how to process it? This is like, what if your whole life was upended and you didn't know what to do with yourself now? I kind of respect that, doing something a little different. That's kind of a cool thing to play with in this world. I'm for it. I am for it. Megan was a really fun movie, like a little surprise hit that I enjoyed. I'd like to see more from the world. I mean, I guess if we're looking at things on like, from like a certain perspective, the new like slasher would be artificial intelligence. Like that would be like the next evolution of that type of character because it just used to be like dirty secrets or like buried stuff we accidentally killed this guy and burned him alive or this mother killed her son or whatever and and the evolution would be like what if mankind created its new worst enemy something to take over its place i could see that i kind of respect that i do dig that shall we take a little break to check out the score of the hockey game folks how are we looking it's the end of the first period as i'm recording this Oh, some new set photos leaked for the thing we're going to be talking about soon. Should we just talk about it now? We have one more piece of news, 
And that is the Nosferatu trailer came out. I saw this in front of the bike riders instead of actually seeing it on my phone. Robert Edgar's just having the time of his life making the thing he clearly has wanted to make for a very long time. Like, you could almost see his entire existence is founded on watching Nosferatu as like a young kid and being like, yeah, this is entirely my personality now. Looks amazing. I love the visuals. They're so cinematic and so cheesy, but I respect it so much for that. This looks like it's going to be incredibly fun in a very dark and sadistic way, which is what you want to see from Nosferatu. I love it. We have actually talked about the original Nosferatu film on this channel. If you are interested in seeing me cover that one, very cool movie. Very easy to watch too. If you just want to look it up on YouTube or whatever, you could probably find it. So much fun. And seeing it get like a modern adaptation with like creepy freaks today, I'm for it. You know, Lily Rose Depp, she looks great. Willem Dafoe looks like a nerd. I'm so invested. Willem Dafoe is continuing to be in every movie ever made, and you gotta respect it. Also, we did lose Donald Sutherland very recently. Talk about a legendary career full of so many great movies like Clute and MASH and The Dirty Dozen and, of course, the Hunger Games films. He was quite an actor, quite a talented actor. 88, his son Keith is like, there's never been anyone like him, there'll never be anyone like him again. And I'm like, yeah, you're right, man. Your dad was incredible, like a legendary actor who's done some amazing stuff. Truly incredible and exceptional. We love you. Rest in peace, man. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, let's talk about Superman for a minute. A few weeks ago, we got like our first official look at the Superman suit. It was in like a photo James Gunn released where Superman's sitting in an apartment putting on his boots and a laser is behind him. <laughs> Man, what a weird photo when you think about how the suit actually looks like. That was weird. Was that like an early concept for the suit that you put on? Because there is so much difference from the suit we are seeing on these set photos and the suit that, that we, we saw in the official reveal. I don't know, like the coloring looks so different. Yeah, and clearly there was like some weird lighting going on in like that one photo. But man, oh man, we're in that era again, folks. Get hyped for superhero movies. Get hyped for superhero movies. The time's coming again. I'm still cautious, cautiously optimistic. I'm, I'm at this point in my life, I can't sit down and get super excited for a superhero project, no matter what it is. You could literally come to me right now and say, guess what? Disney Plus is actually going to do a Finn Jones and Mike Coulter, Heroes for Hire, where they're looking like they're iconic characters, and it's set in the 70s. And I'd be like, oh, I'm still kind of nervous. <laughs> That's the one thing I want more than any. But we got some set leaks to talk about, which is, it's awesome. It's happening again. You can only hide it for so long. Just accept the fact that there's going to be paparazzi looking to get photos of this. So we saw a lot of characters actually, like before this, we've seen stuff with the engineer being leaked. We saw some behind the scenes stuff where we saw... Uh, who's playing Steve Lombard? It's Beck Bennett. We saw his mustache and his hair because he was doing like a thing with the Jimmy Olsen actor and the Cat Grant actress. But now we got some stuff that's happening in Metropolis. So we saw what the Daily Planet's going to look like. A big building looks awesome, looks grand and like an actual idea that's very Golden Age inspired. So that's really cool. We also got to see some of like the street signs and they're named after comic book creators like Jeff Loeb like Mark Wade, like Grant Morrison, like Frank Quitely. I'm like, hey, somebody cares about this stuff. That's awesome. Like someone who has reverence for the comic books and understands what this character is supposed to be. And you can see where the inspirations are coming from. Grant Morrison, Mark Wade, Jeff Loeb, some of the most important creators to work on Superman in like the modern era. So seeing them represented here, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I gotta say. And then slowly but surely, in like to the, the past like 12 hours even, these set foes were coming in hot and fast. Like we saw a lot of like the behind the scenes for the buildings and like the places. Was it like there's like a cafe, the Wounded Duck, I think it's called, 
which is like a reference to Tim Drake or something. There's like Luther Corp technology stuff all over the place, but we got some looks at some characters, including, before we get to the big ones, Perry White. There is a leaked photo of Perry White. And guess what he's chomping on, folks? A cigar. Are we bringing smoking back to movies? <laughs> oh, please, 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 please. I know we'll never see it, but you know how fucking awesome it would be if Eben Moss Bachrock got to smoke a cigar as his thing? I feel like we wouldn't do it anymore. So dumb. Oh, it'd just be so cool. But there he is. Perry White is smoking a cigar. We also got to see Lois Lane. She's in purple, which she should be because it's a comic book. Looks awesome. Rachel Brosnahan, the most beautiful woman to ever walk this earth. She's out here doing Lois Lane. She's doing Lois Lane. And she looks amazing. And we're here for it. And we love it. We also got to look at Mr. Terrific. And holy crap, does that just look like the suit? It's perfect. It's flawless. It looks exactly how you'd put that into like a real human. And it looks great. And we got to look at the Superman suit. And it looks even better. There's real color to it. It doesn't look as like New 52 Eyes does that image they released. The colors are vibrant. He's wearing like the Christopher Reeve trunks. Man, is it exciting. All of these photos, all of these leaked photos, man, they look so good. I don't understand why it's been so long since we had like some good stuff. But man, it's just exciting. It's exciting to see some good shit for once, you know? Uh, I don't know. It's cool. Makes me happy. Really makes me happy to know that we're doing something right here. I'm all for it. James Gunn, you might have been, like, you know, confused. Or you might have had some of your audience being like, what are we doing here? But you won them all over, I think. Just, like, all of these leaks. And all of them are still, like, actually happening. Like, we're seeing, like, collateral damage. And there's military people. And Superman and Lois are there. And you're just like, what are we doing? Just look how fun and happy they all look. It's truly amazing. I'm so happy we're seeing this. I like I like set least like this because it's just so obvious. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. Man, she looks so good as Lois. That's oh, that's awesome. I'm glad we're doing everything here. All right, should we jump into the next topic, which is something I just wanted to bring up casually because I think it's very interesting. It is about a movie I have yet to see. I don't know if I am going to see it, but Inside Out 2 becomes the highest grossing film of the year, surpassing Dune Part 2 in its second weekend. It was a matter of time. I had my money like on Despicable Me 4 for being the top movie. But this is the other thing. Never count out Pixar. For like they'll always do good. They'll always do good. I think their their biggest failure is Lightyear because it came out at a bad time and it just was poorly marketed. But the other ones that didn't do great financially, like Coco, no, Coco did great. I mean, Soul and Luca and Turning Red. That was pandemic stuff. And onward, I guess, to some extent, too. But we're seeing... Okay, I don't, I don't know how I want to gauge this. In two weeks, Inside Out 2 becomes the highest grossing film of the year. We've also know this year that Pixar had a lot of like uh, layoffs. They laid off a lot of people. And I, I know the two don't correlate, but I just think, you know, you, you have to get rid of some of your employees and then it's going to make it look like you're doing better without them or whatever. I don't know. It really does worry me about the future of Pixar. I know there was some things, Netflix said this too, and to some extent the Pixar people said this as well, go for like the certified hits as opposed to original like stories that aren't going to be for everybody. Oh, man, man. So many thoughts on that. First off, Pixar, you were founded on making original stories, and then they became for everybody. Take some chances and do stuff. 
I hate the idea of just trying to make stuff that appeals to everybody because it's impossible. And I know Pixar is one of the most success, like the most successful animation studios ever made. But just the idea that they're not going to take chances anymore really upsets me. Considering one of their best movies about like a young girl growing up and going through puberty and figuring out her body and identity is turning red. And it's arguably from critics I trust and respect. It's better than what Inside Out 2 is. So I, I just, I don't know. Very worried that this is, is going to become a precedent. Like we already know. Toy Story 5 is in development. I'm sure we're going to get announcements for an Incredibles 3. Like, if they could get Bird back to do Incredibles 3, they'd be happy. Maybe Andrew... St no, because Stanton's doing Toy Story 5. I was like, maybe Stanton's going to do another uh, Finding Nemo or something. I'm worried that the lesson that Pixar is going to take from this success is just we're not going to take chances anymore i'm worried that's what it's going to be i think it has the potential to be that and that really sucks that really really sucks but that's what it could be so do we think despicable me to four despicable me too despicable me four is going to beat this i do and I think Illumination knows exactly what they're doing with that movie. Marketing it for everybody in a different way than Inside Out 2. Illumination, they're a weirder company because I think they're just going to stick to the minions. But I don't know. I'm very worried about all of this. I, I think I am, ha okay, I am happy that this movie is succeeding. I think it's important and it's cool that it's happening. But what if this is it? What if we don't see anything else from Pixar happen like this? You know, look at what Elemental did. Elemental just grew and grew and grew from good word of mouth. Maybe Elio will do the same. I'd hope so, but they pushed it back so far, man. I'm so worried they're just going to forget about that one and just leave it in the dust. God, that sucks. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, let's talk about Smiling Friends for a minute. Truthfully, I don't have much to say when it comes to Smiling Friends. I think it's a perfect encapsulation of internet culture and just, like, love of animation in a different way. Like, this is a show that has just built itself on getting specific animators to build something. To be like, here is a little scene, film it for our world, and we'll have fun in it. And I think that's really cool. I think that's really important. And they've done something very special with that. This season is really fun. I think they take a lot more liberties and do a lot more interesting ideas, like focusing on Alan for an entire episode, or just letting like different pairings happen where it's not solely about Charlie and Pim. Sometimes we'll do like Mr. Boss and Pim, or we'll do like Alan and Charlie or Charlie and Pim and stuff, and and Alan and Pim, I should say too. Or, you know, the breakout hit of like the year, Gwimbly, and you're just like, these are awesome. It's like guys who love this era of video games and internet and just like voice work and animation just building something so fun and creative like this is a show that feels very adult swim but like in that very specific era of adult swim that we don't see a lot of this feels like the successor to rick and morty in a lot of ways where it's like dumb nihilistic specific humor that is just more conversational as opposed to just like threateningly loud or whatever but it can get loud, it can get intense, and it has so much going for in that aspect. Like getting specific people to come in and do voice work like the Red Letter Media guys or Nostalgia Critic or any of them really. Any of those people that they get in just like for these shows to do like one segment. It's really cool to see that. And it's one of the best shows on television right now, which is so weird to say because what it's doing is so specific. It's just ripping on so many specific and niche things that don't really like fit into like the popular zeitgeist, but they're making it work for this show. And you're like, that's awesome to see. I'm really happy that the show exists. I like that it found its audience. I like that these guys are doing some interesting voice work and interesting animation. It is just really incredible and fun, in my opinion. Something like Smiling Friends 
getting the success it has is really cool. And getting another renewal, that's awesome to see as well. Just doing so much cool stuff, being so creative and different, letting these characters grow. Some of my favorite bits are just when Charlie and Pim are talking about like how fucked up the world is. Like the one where they go to space and Charlie's like, I, I don't even know how we top this. I don't know what we're doing anymore. We can't tell anybody about the earth or any of this. Or the one of Professor Psychotic where he's like, the world we lived in sucks. <laughs> it's all so interesting and just so much fun. And a show like this, I'm so glad it's got its audience. I'm so glad it's growing and becoming something original and different. It's awesome. So cool to see that something like this can thrive and just be fun and different. I really love that. I really love that for this type of show. So that's it. We're going to stop right there. Smiling Friends is so much fun. I'm going to say it's a 10 out of 10. A really good show that is worth exploring if you're interested in like that type of humor, that type of era of television. And that's going to do it for this episode of The Geek Wave. Yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.